Well, good morning and welcome to Adventures in Awakening. Uh, used to be Zen Fits and uh, we're pumped up and ready to go. And the title of this talk is uh, The Flip Side of Buddha. The Flip Side of Buddha. I was going to call it uh, The Alchemy of Buddha, but this one is the flip side because I just thought of it. Um, when I come down in the morning uh, after meditation and I write on, uh, I open up Facebook and I start commenting on comments or commenting on what I wrote yesterday or coming a new idea, whatever, uh, it's always an awakening for me. I get new insights. I go, ooh, I didn't see that before. And so this morning's uh, awakening, if you will, is that uh, the alchemy of Buddha is not unlike the alchemy of the Middle Ages. Let, let me explain that. Before we had modern science, uh, the age of reason, or the enlightenment, so-called enlightenment, uh, where everything is a clear and distinct idea, everything is a thing in Newton's universe, you see. Before that, there was the science was alchemy. And this science of the Middle Ages was, was a uh, scientific mysticism. While they were working with experiments, chemicals and things like that, they were searching for something mystical. They were searching for the Philosopher's Stone. Now the Philosopher's Stone is a mythical stone. You, even uh, uh, Joseph Campbell says it was the Holy Grail. But it was that alchemy, that, that, uh, trans, that transmutation of lead into gold. So you can see even the Mass, the Catholic Mass, was alchemy in the sense that it transmuted bread and wine into the living body of Christ. See, so you go from uh, the mundane, from the form to the formless. You go from lead to gold. You go from suffering to awakening. That's the alchemy. It's a transmutation of what you've got into something that's transcendent, but that unifies, you know. So all right, take, let's take the Eucharist here. Uh, it's, the loaf of bread was whole, so you'd break it up into crumbs. The wine was whole, so you pour it into little cups. Now it's fragments of the bread and the wine. And it serves, so you get the fragmentation. But when you eat it in faith, you are transmuted into wholeness. <gasps> I see. So when you see... When you awaken, it's not like some arriving at some paradise or something. It's just seeing wholeness. So we're all awakening every time you're in a confusion, you're, you're in a fragmentation. Oh, what's going on? Uh, anxiety, doubt, fear, uh, negation, uh, despair. All of that is the broken bread. And suddenly... what's true. Now you know, and now you just go ahead and do what you're doing, but you do it from wholeness rather than fragmentation and confusion and asking other people to tell you what to do. You see, you know. And when you know, knowing and doing is the same thing. When you know what to do, you do it. You don't say, I know what to do, but should I do that? There's none of that. You, when you know what to do, you don't say, oh, should I do it or not? What, what should I do? She said that knowing is doing. We think it's two, but it's one, you see. It's action. It's creative action. So awakening is creative action. So when I just get a, seems very simple. It's not abstract. It's not, it's not mystical. It's not uh, um, only, only the gods and the saints and the sages can do it, you see. All this non-dual crap. It's very, it's everyday mind. It's you. 
So when you get an insight, a little one, oh, I know how to open the box now. <laughs> That's mine, you know. I get a new package and I can a new box or something is got I never opened it. I can't oh blah 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 and and I so I give it to my wife and she comes in and goes click and opens it. Or she's confused on the computer and everything is blah 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 and I go over there and go click and it starts. We do that all the time. Click and it opens. Click and it opens, you see. So the Buddha of alchemy or uh the flip side of Buddha is that, is that the alchemy, the transmutation of fragmentation, confusion, doubt, uh, uh, despair, and negativity into I know, is alchemy. The lead is my negativity, my confusion, my not knowing what to do. And the gold is knowing what to do. Knowing is unambiguous. Not knowing, confusion, doubt, doubt, despair, and, 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 and uh, negativity is fragmentation. The world is like a Picasso painting. You know, look at a Picasso, a portrait of a Picasso woman is all fragmented in nose, eyes, everything is all disjointed. So what he's doing is painting a picture of what the world looks like to the mind that is fragmented. He's saying, basically, Picasso is just saying, oh, look, that's you. That's what the world looks like to a fragmented mind. You see. So his paintings are alchemy in the sense that if you can really if you see what he's saying, suddenly you know. I don't know what it's about. Oh, it's stupid. Forget about it. I don't know. Blah, 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 blah. Five fingers. Which one is the real hand? That's the real hand. <laughs> it's one. See, we, it's everywhere, the one. We, you, you win something and with somebody you go, bam! What is that? The one. The clap is the one. An old pond, the frog jumps, plop. What's the plop? The one. Anyway, as you can see, what I'm trying to explain here, this is all very simple. We get so all caught up in non-dual and philosophical ramblings and words and arguments over how many angels can dance on the head of a pen. That was the, that was the Middle Ages. That was scholasticism, theology. How many angels can dance on the head of a pen? That's non-dualism today. It's how many, how many forms can dance on the head of emptiness? Whatever. It's on this. It's endless. It's endless. Knowing just bam. So Buddha is alchemy. Or I just like the phrase, flip out, flip on, listen to the music. Didn't you like that? That was like from the 60s. Remember that? Turn on, drop out, tune in. So I'll get turn on, drop out, tune in. Yeah, that was it. All right. Flip out, flip on, listen to the music. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> you know, we so many so many uh, great physical metaphors are gone, like playing a record, the flip side of the record. You got one record, two sides. You play one side, what's the flip side? You turn it over, it's the same song. <laughs> That's Buddhism. You flip the world over, it's the same world. We all explore, I think T.S. Eliot, you know, uh, we, we're, all, we're all exploring, but at the end of our exploring, you come to where you started and see it for the first time. So that's the transmutation and the alchemy of Buddha. We're searching for the one. We're searching for the flip side, the other side, the promised land. When I'll be whole, when I'll be real, when I'm awakening, when I'll have it all, when I'll be the one. We're searching. Blah, 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 blah. And suddenly, what I'm searching for is already here. The flip side is this side. This side is the flip side. It's the same music on both sides. Nothing changes except you know. 
and now you can hear the music. <laughs> it's very simple. By the way, you see what? Oh, <laughs> see that right there? Of course, this is on the mirror. But that says Naughty Knots. That was the uh, plaque on a houseboat we lived in in Miami in 1970 uh, for about six months anyway. And we called the houseboat Naughty Knots. And I really, I didn't know what, I just was cute then, but now I see a different meaning in it, different meaning, the ir irony in it. Uh, okay, thanks for dropping in. <laughs>